So in this video, we're going to cover another very important risk type, which is liquidity risk. So let me get, give you a quick overview where we are in the course. We have looked at what risk management is, and we said that's basically balancing risk and equity, and we've looked at some risk types like credit risk and market risk. And in this video, we're going to look at liquidity risk in particular. And liquidity risk is conceptually very different from the other risk types that we have looked at. And the other risk types, they're commonly referred as capital risks. And they are concerned with the following question. They are concerned if you're wealthy enough to meet your obligations. In other words, capital risks are all about what are my assets worth and what is my debt worth. And capital risks are all about balancing the assets that a bank has with the debt that a bank has. In, in other words, ensuring that the bank is wealthy enough considering all its debt obligations. Liquidity risk, well, that's a bit of a different problem that arises with banks. And I've been introduced to liquidity risk with the following quote. My colleague said to me, liquidity risk is if you have a Monet on the wall, but you can't pay the janitor. So in other words, the problem is not that you're not wealthy enough. A Monet, it's worth several million dollars. But the problem is that the bill, that the painting is not liquid. It's not cash, right? So if the janitor is asking for his paycheck, you can't just hand him the painting. You need to hand him or her cash. And that is the problem that liquidity risk managers deal with. They have the task to ensure that the bank always have has enough cash if it has to pay out something. And... As with every risk types we have looked at, there's a pillar one and a pillar two approach to limiting liquidity risk. And we're going to first look at the pillar one approach to liquidity risk management. And the pillar one approach is rather simple. The pillar one approach has some ratios like the liquidity cash ratio, LCR, which have to be met. So the liquidity cash ratio, that's the most important one, is liquid assets. And liquid assets, well, those are assets which are basically cash or highly liquid assets which you can sell very quickly on a financial market like um, government bonds. And the net cash outflow over the next 30 days, well, this is calculated as what the bank has to pay in the next 30 days. That's something like, okay, I have to pay back a credit. I have to pay back a loan. Or I have to pay back some deposits that depositors have deposited at my bank. And the trick is that the net, net cash outflow is calculated as all cash outflows times a weighting factor plus all cash inflows times a weighting factor. And with the liquidity cash ratio, the weighting factor for outflows is higher than the weighting factor for inflows. So the weighting factor for outflows is four and for inflows is three. And a bank has to calculate this liquidity cash ratio and has to ensure that it's, that it's larger than one. And by weighting outflows more than inflows, we ensure that the bank is rather conservative. So that if something happens to the inflows, that that does not mean that the bank cannot meet its obligations. So that's the approach in pillar one. There are basically just ratios that the bank has to calculate and that have to meet certain thresholds. Another ratio, for instance, is the net stable funding ratio, NSFR. So let's now go to the pillar two liquidity risk management and the pillar two approach. Well, it works with the liquidity gap analysis and this is, it's, it's quite simple. You basically have a time profile of all payments that the bank has to do. And then you look at this time profile and look if the payments inflows and outflows match each, each other. So let's maybe say that the bank has a guy who does a deposit. So in other words, he opens an account at the bank and he makes a deposit of 100 euros. And let's also say that the bank, well, it gives us a credit. 
And this credit, well, it's 50 euros today that the bank pays to some company. And in one year, the company will get 55, the bank will get 55 euros back from the company. And let's just say that from, from our depositor, we know that, or we think that within six months, well, he will deduct 10 euros from his bank account. So if you look at this very simple time profile, what we can say is that, well, in the beginning of the year, the bank has 50 in cash. Then there's a deduction of 10. And then at the end of the year, the bank gets 55 again. So we go up from 40 plus 55 to 95. And this is the liquidity cash profile. And within this analysis, well, what's the relevant thing? The relevant thing we're looking at is if our, if our net liquidity in an outflow is going below zero. And then we're in danger, you know, then we can't meet our obligations. Then we have the situation I've, I've talked about before. Then we have the situation that we have a Monet on the, on the, on the wall, but we can't pay the janitor. So what banks typically, typically do is they look at their liquidity gap analysis and they have a safety threshold. So they always look that they have some kind of reserves so they can deal with unexpected events. And of course, within this analysis, what banks do is they do stress testing. So they would look at, okay, what happens if my depositor becomes really crazy and only, and does not, does not um, deduct 10 euros, but maybe 30 euros. Would I still be able to repay him out of the cash reserves I have? And depending on which kind of assumptions you make, you then form your cash reserves or you plan your liquidity. And that's basically what liquidity risk managers do. They always look at, okay, what cash do I need at certain points in time? And what cash reserves do I need? Or how large do these reserves need to be so that I can repay whatever comes to me in 99.9% .9 of cases. You remember it, that's the important number that the Basel III risk management framework is all about. That a bank can survive a year with a 99.9% .9 probability. So to wrap this video up, we've looked at liquidity risk management. And I said it's conceptually very different than capital risks, because if, if a bank is illiquid, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have enough wealth to meet its obligation. It just means that you don't have enough cash to pay out your immediate demands. And as with every risk type in Basel III, there is a pillar one and a pillar two approach to managing this risk. Pillar one requires from banks that you meet certain ratios like the liquidity cash ratio or the net stable funding rate, uh, the net stable funding ratio. And pillar two requires you to do an in-depth liquidity gap analysis and always have this liquidity gap analysis handy. And actually banks do this every day. So they update this every day. And that's it. That's liquidity risk management.